Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall are remembered as one of Hollywood's greatest couples, but their coming together wasn't without at least some victims. Bogart revealed in his reputation as a hard-drinking, fist-fighting, quick-to-anger man and didn't miss any opportunities to prove it. Who destroyed Lauren Bacall and Humphrey Bogart marriage? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Humphrey Bogart's Secret Mistress Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall's romance began with a scandalous affair. Even film stars really get to live out a screen romance but Lauren Bacall's husky query to Humphrey Bogart, anybody got a match, at the beginning of To Have and Have Not in 1944, sparked a real-life love affair, which was to end only with Bogart's death from smoking-related cancer 13 years later. Lauren Bacall was a Jewish girl from the Bronx, and he was raised Episcopal on Manhattan's Upper West Side. Together they made some of the greatest film noir movies the world had ever seen, and their May-December romance will go down in history as one of Hollywood's most glamorous marriages. Lauren Bacall, 19, was a former model starring in her first leading film role when she met Humphrey Bogart, 45, on the set of To Have and Have Not in 1944. Bogart was married to his third wife, actress Mayo Method, at the time, despite their 25-year age gap, sparks flew between the two stars, and their relationship progressed quickly. The movie debut on January 20, 1945, and Bogart was divorced soon after. He and Bacall tied the knot on May 21, 1945, at a ceremony on Pulitzer Prize-winning author Louis Bromfield's farm in Lucas, Ohio. Bacall wasn't the least bit interested in her future husband the first time she saw him on screen in Casablanca. The friend she saw the movie with found him sexy. I thought she was crazy, Bacall told Vanity Fair. When they met in person a few years later, her first impression of him was of a cordial, polite and friendly man. He told jokes to make her feel more comfortable in front of the camera, and soon their working relationship became a flirtatious friendship. In her memoir, Be Myself, Bacall recounted how, three weeks into filming, Bogart stopped by her trailer to say goodnight. Suddenly he leaned over, put his hand under my chin, and kissed me. It was impulsive, he was a bit shy, no lunging wolf tactics. He took a worn package of matches out of his pocket and asked me to put my phone number on the back. I did. I don't know why I did, except it was kind of a part of our game. Bogey was meticulous about not being too personal, was known for never fooling around with women at work or anywhere else. He was not that kind of man, and also he was married to a woman who was a notorious drinker and fighter a tough lady who would hit you with an ashtray, lamp, anything, as soon as not. When director Howard Hawks got wind of the affair, he tried to put a stop to it by telling Bacall it was just a fling, that Bogart would dump her once filming ended. He even threatened to ruin her career, bluffing that he would send her to the lowest studios in Hollywood. Hawks used to say to Bogey, you don't have to get serious about this girl, Take her downtown to a hotel and get a room with her. That's enough. That was not Bogie's scene at all. Bacall revealed decades later. Her mother disliked her new boyfriend too. When she came to visit Bacall, she mused out loud about what her daughter was thinking by pursuing a married man 25 years her senior who had a drinking problem. Humphrey de Forest Bogart, who will be 53 years old come Christmas morning and doesn't care who knows it, is a whiskey-drinking actor who has been hooting at Hollywood and making fun of its pretensions for 22 years. 
Mr Bogart's derision often acted out with alcoholic capers in nightclubs, followed by funny quotes in the public prints, is mainly aimed at the popular gospel that under their grease paint, glamorous or menacing, screen players are really fine, home-loving, dishwashing citizens like you and me. In his one bad man campaign to correct this impression, Bogart has toiled to re-establish the more interesting belief that actors are not necessarily wholesome, meantime making 46 pictures, getting famous, piling up a fortune, having a whale of a good time, and proving to his satisfaction that he is as tough as the grey-faced gunman he plays on the screen. Of course, no one successfully deterred the union. Bacall has said that on her marriage she immediately became part of Bogie's generation, which may account for the change in her screen persona, but they appear to have had a wonderful marriage, but Bacall had become the little woman, a devoted homebody who doesn't talk back, who barely talks at all. I was married to a man who expected me to be there, Bacall has said. Though their relationship was marred by mutual infidelity, his with his longtime hairdresser Verita Peterson and hers with Frank Sinatra, their mutual deep care for each other was evident until the end. Humphrey Bogart's secret 17-year affair with his wig maker. But what many moviegoers may not know is that Bacall wasn't the only woman in Bogart's life. Verita Bouvier Thompson, a vivacious brunette who could outdrink and outswear the big screen legend, had a 17-year affair with Bogart, which began two years before he met Bacall on the set of 1944's To Have and Have Not, and continued right up until his end in 1957. Their relationship, one of the best kept secrets in show business, would finally be exposed in Thompson's 1982 memoir, Tell All, Bogey and Me, A Love Story. The feisty Thompson, who once dubbed herself Bacall's worst nightmare, was born Verita Bouvier in Arizona to an Irish father and Mexican mother. She was first runner-up in the 1935 Miss Arizona Beauty pageant, and like a lot of pretty girls, hightailed it to Hollywood her sights set on becoming a star. She nabbed a contract, but while shooting a western, she came tumbling off her horse and broke her arm. Perhaps it was fate. Thompson went to Mexico City to mend and crossed paths with a French wig maker who wanted to work in the US. Before you know it, the two decided to team up. Thompson enrolled in beauty school and would go on to become one of the most in-demand hairdressers in Hollywood working with a slew of actresses, as well as follically challenged leading men, among them Charles Boyer, Ray Milland and Gary Cooper. Thompson would meet Bogart at a rap party for Casablanca, held at Warner Brothers Studio. Actress Anne Sheridan, a pal, invited Thompson to the bash. Bogart took one look and was blown away. The seductive Thompson, no shrinking violet, even got the macho actor on the dance floor. Bogey didn't like to dance, but honey, we danced the night away, and from that day on we were lovers, she recalled years later. Despite the fact that they were both hitched, Bogart to his wife, Mae Matho, a marriage famous for its frequent fighting, and Thompson to film technician Robert Peterson, they embarked on an affair. Both ended up getting divorces from their spouses, but in 1945, Thompson was stunned to learn that less than two weeks after Bogart's divorce, he tied the knot with his 20-year-old co-star, a former New York model named Lauren Betty Bacall. Nonetheless, the clandestine relationship continued. The two knew they had to keep their affair a secret. Even a hint of infidelity could bring a career crashing down in those days. Fortunately, it was an ideal setup. Thompson had a valid reason for being around the actor. He wore a toupee, and she was a wig maker after all. Thompson would travel with Bogart, carrying a suitcase packed with colourfully named hair pieces, including the cocktail wig and the shaggy wig. She once confessed to sleeping with one of his wigs tucked under her pillow when he was away. 
Bogart would even introduce Thompson as his mistress, shrewdly figuring that people would never believe he would admit to such an indiscretion if it were really true. Oddly enough, Peterson was a frequent dinner guest at the Bogart home. She'd later admit, it seemed hypocritical as hell for me to have anything to do with Bogie's home life. And while Bogie agreed with me in principle, he pointed out that it would raise suspicions if I didn't act as an employee of Humphrey Bogart normally would. And so I became more familiar with Betty and the two children than I wanted to under the circumstances. The affair ended when Peterson married producer Walter Thompson in 1955, but she remained friends with the couple until Bogart died in 1957. Thompson would claim that the actor dialed her right at the very end, asking her to check on his beloved boat, the Santana. Don't drink all my scotch, he told her. I'll be down there soon. Thompson's husband died in 1975. She opened a restaurant, Burritas La Cantina, on Sunset Boulevard. In 1982, she moved to New Orleans and opened a piano bar, Bogey and Me. Bogart died of esophageal cancer in 1957. I never believed that I could love anyone again, for so many things have happened in my life to me that I was afraid to love. Bogart wrote in a love letter to Bacall at the beginning of their relationship. Now I'm afraid that you'll become impatient and that I'll lose you, but even if that happened, I wouldn't stop loving you. Bacall got engaged to Sinatra shortly after, but the relationship ended after she talked publicly about their affair against his wishes. She married actor Jason Robards in 1961, though it seems she never really got over Bogey. Even her second spouse referred to her as the Widow Bogart. No one has ever written a romance better than we lived, she wrote in her memoir. After her death on August 12, 2014, she was interred at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California, the same cemetery as Bogart. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think of the marriage of Lauren Bacall and Humphrey Bogart? Did you know that their relationship was so scandalous?